Good afternoon. I hope everyone is well. Um, our school is just sort of starting back after Thanksgiving. I don't know where in the year your school is. Um, I'm recording a little bit ahead of time. So um, anyway, I hope everyone is well at your home. Um, we are going to continue on. The last time we had an introduction to the Viking Age. And the Viking Age, we learned that Vikings are, is actually a name for the warriors of that society. And um, we can call people part of the Viking Age, but they really were Norsemen or Northmen. Um, we'll be having new vocabulary today about an anvil. An anvil is a heavy, heavy iron block on which heated softened metals are hammered into different shapes. So a blacksmith would use an anvil. Counsel, advice and guidance, um, is that's the noun of it. You can have advice and guidance from someone. If you are gruff, it can be harsh and rough and low. You can have a gruff voice. Reliable is trustworthy and dependable. Treacherous, sort of the opposite, is very dangerous and sort of scheming. Sort of the opposite of trustworthy and dependable is treacherous. So a little bit more background. We ha You had some essential background for the very first lesson, which really just gave you a lot of background information. This lesson gives you more background information, but it's going to prepare you for the next part of the story. The next part of our unit is going to be told through a narrative, which is actually a story of a particular child. This boy's name is Bjorn. Can you say Bjorn? Uh, there are other characters in the story that you will learn a little bit later on. And that name may not be really familiar to you because this story's character would have spoken Old Norse or ancient Scandinavian languages and their names probably sound different. So today's present day countries that make up Scandinavia are Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. That's the setting for this story, Scandinavia, and more particularly Norway. Bjorn lives in a very small town with the rest of his large family. At that time, Bjorn might have called himself either a Norwegian, a person from Norway, or a Norse boy, but he would not have called himself a Viking. The only people called Vikings were the warriors who went out on raids. This story takes place long ago, and around AD 900. Do you remember what AD means? Anno Domini? That's right. So 900 years after the birth of Jesus. Um, so the setting of a story tells when and where a story takes place. So the when of our story is about 900 AD and the where of our story is in Norway. That's the setting. So the way an author chooses to have the narrator tell the story is called point of view. If Bjorn is telling his own story using pronouns like I, me, my, our, and mine, then this story is written in the first person. In this narration, the first person narrator Bjorn is also a character. There were some other point of view stories that you have listened to. The Wind in the Willows was told from a third person. You had a narrator who was outside of the story who could sort of look down and tell you things that they were thinking and acting and doing. And then also in the light and sound, Samuel, Jack and the Children was also a third person narration. So the third person narrator was not a character in that story. This story involves Bjorn growing up as a young Norse boy. The theme of growing up is called 
coming of age. Growing up or coming of age is not always an easy process, as you will find out. So coming of age stories might involve tough situations and some sad emotions. The expectations for what a girl and a boy would do as part of growing up during this Viking age were different. Boys, for example, might have been expected to travel on raids or become apprentices, farmers, or fishermen. Whereas girls might assume more responsibility in household chores. Both would have been expected to marry very young, often by the age of 13. Yikes. How many of you have a 13-year-old brother or sister? They would be at the marrying age. That's not the case for our society. Have you ever read a story that makes it easy to imagine the scene the author is describing? Using rich vocabulary and dialogue among the characters can help whoever's reading your story imagine what is taking place. When an author describes a scene through sight, smell, sound, touch, it helps to bring a story to life. So that's using the senses. Listen for vocabulary and descriptions that bring Bjorn's narrative to life. Sometime during these stories, I might ask you to close your eyes and paint the picture in your mind. Um, I talk to my students about making it a movie. If you can make the story a movie in your mind and really picture what it looks like and sounds like and smells like, and, um, then you have, this author has been a really good author. That's called visualizing, when you make a movie in your head or you paint the picture in your mind. So if you hear me say that, I might ask you to close your eyes and try to picture it. For several days, rain had fallen heavily upon the ground. It would appear that Freyr, the god of fertility, had finally listened to our requests for rain. The farmers who lived on the outskirts of our small town had already sown the seeds for the spring crops. Now the rain would help them grow. After so many days of rain, the thatched roofs that covered our homes were heavy with moisture. A thatched roof is made of natural material, sort of like straw and leaves. The raindrops created ripples in the hundreds of muddy puddles that were now unavoidable in the narrow streets. Despite the rain, the streets were still busy. People were either going to or coming from the marketplaces. Some skilled craftspeople sold their wares from right outside their homes. I stood in the doorway and looked out at the hustle and bustle of my town. I watched as smoke from the hearths of other houses rose up into the gray sky. I caught the aroma of meat being roasted for the evening meals. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw my father as he worked. I saw him raise a hammer high into the air and then bring it down onto the piece of burning hot iron that lay upon the anvil. Listen to that again. Close your eyes and see if you can make a movie of what's going on using these words. I stood in the doorway and looked out at the hustle and bustle of my town. I watched as smoke from the hearths of other houses rose up into the gray sky. I caught the aroma of meat being roasted for the evening meals. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw my father as he worked. I saw him raise a hammer high into the air and then bring it down onto a piece of burning hot iron that lay upon the anvil. Did you get a good picture? As the town's master blacksmith, my father was valued and known for making beautiful, strong, reliable items out of metal, such as swords, jewelry, and keys. He was admired for his physical strength and wise counsel. It was because of him I suddenly realized that I knew almost all the families in our town, but until this very moment I had not realized how much I would miss them. Bjorn? What are you doing? Come here and help me, came the sound of my father's booming voice. He had obviously spotted me standing in the doorway. Yes, father, I replied as I hurried to his side. 
I had been working as my father's apprentice for almost three years. My father worked in a forge made of wood and thatch similar to our own home. His forge was always filled with smoke, dust, and flickering flames, not to mention the sound of constant hammering. As soon as I stepped into his forge, father handed me the bellows and put me to work. Strengthen the fire, Bjorn. I have work to do, he instructed me. Immediately, I began to use the bellows and watched as the flow of air fueled the flames. The more I pumped the bellows, the more the flames flickered. As the air shot into the flames, they became more intense. My father was making a number of axe heads, chisels, and nails. He explained to me that these tools would be needed when I reached Iceland. Father, why do so many of our people leave home and travel to faraway places? I asked as I watched him heat pieces of metal in the flames. As you know, Bjorn, Odin has blessed our homeland with many things. We have an ocean that helps to feed us. We have rivers and fjords. Even our rugged highlands are very beautiful. Odin has shown us how to build the best ships in the world and how to sail them. Even in the darkest nights, we can look up at the stars and find our way across the most treacherous oceans. Bjorn, it is necessary for us to seek new lands. We are a mighty people. Our warriors are known as mighty Vikings. When our warriors sail across the North Sea to conquer new lands, people tremble at the sight of our longships, he explained. Sometimes the people who leave never come back, I replied, trying hard not to look at him. These are changing times, my son. There is much conflict in our own homeland now. For many, it is best that they leave and not return. Bjorn, you are almost 13 years of age. You are almost a man now. Soon you will take a wife, if Tyr desires it. You will be a, vi a Viking warrior too. The assembly members have decided that you and many other young men will establish homes in a new land. It is our way, my son he said firmly. To take a wife was the language used at that time for marrying a woman. It was common for people to marry at younger ages long ago. I did not reply. Instead, I continued to fuel the fire and watch as my father heated, twisted, and shaped pieces of iron into, into an array of objects. He would frequently explain to me what he was doing. Like many other Norse, my father was an expert blacksmith. My father was such a skillful blacksmith, however, that he had once been accused of employing the dwarves who dwelled in the deep underground reaches of the earth to make the fine weapons and tools that he produced. He had laughed aloud at this accusation and exclaimed that if anyone could find these dwarves in his forge, they could pay them instead of him. Several times he let me work with pieces of molten metal. These were the best times, the times when my father taught me the skills that his father had taught him. I just wished there was a way that I could stay in my homeland with my people. Outside the forge, daylight was disappearing and twilight was creeping in. Eventually, as the light faded, my father looked up from his work and put his tools away. Time to eat, he said in a gruff voice, but then he ruffled my hair. Let's go see what your grandmother has cooked for us tonight, he continued. I already know what it is, I replied. I helped catch it. It's hare stew, I said, laughing. Do you know what animal a hare is? It's a mammal that looks similar to a rabbit. You're right. Then, with his arm around my shoulders, my father and I began to walk toward our home tempted by the smell of cooking. You are old enough, and tomorrow I will begin to make your sword, my father said. You are honored, Bjord. Very few carls own a sword. It is a gift from Lord Toki to you. You must name it wisely. Similar to the ancient Roman society, the Viking 
people's society consisted of different orders or groups. The Carls were like the Roman plebeians or plebeians. They were the biggest group who worked many different types of jobs. The elite, like the Roman patricians, were called jarls, and the slaves were called thralls. So we have carls that are like plebeians, jarls, J-A-R-L-S, which are like patricians, and thralls who were slaves. I know that, Father. You saved Lord Toki's life, and that is why I am being given this honor. The sword really belongs to you, I said, all the while staring at my feet. I have a sword. It is the sword my father gave to me, he said proudly. You will give this sword to your first son and tell him the story of where it came from and why you have it. That is how we record our history. Now, let us go and eat some hare stew. And with that, we entered our home and took our places around the hearth with the rest of our family members. What examples did you hear in today's story that signaled Bjorn is coming of age or growing up? <laughs> yes, we heard that he is marrying soon. He might become a warrior. He helps his father in the forge and at the anvil. His father is about to make him a sword and he will travel to Iceland. Why is Bjorn going to Iceland? He's going to Iceland to escape the conflict going on in his own homeland. You heard three different Norse gods mentioned in today's story, Freyr, Tyr, and Odin. Can you remember what was the god of? Freyr was the god of fertility. Tyr was the god of war. Odin was the father of the gods. Does this information tell us that the Viking people worshipped one god, or did they worship many gods? You're right. They were polytheistic. They worshipped many gods. Why were the Vikings called Norsemen? Because that name means northern men. The name was given to them from people in England and Europe living south of Scandinavia. What job were many Viking men, Viking age men, including Bjorn's father, skilled at doing? They were skilled blacksmiths. Bjorn's father makes reliable and strong swords. Why do you think a sword would be an important um, tool for a Viking? Well, if you were a real Viking you, and you went I Viking, you needed swords for raids and they were passed down from father to son. What adjectives or phrases would you use to describe Bjorn's father? Strong, wise, reliable, proud to be a blacksmith, good at giving counsel, speaks in a gruff voice. So, do you think Bjorn's father is upset with Bjorn when he uses his gruff voice? I think that this might just be the tone and manner of Bjorn's father. Perhaps his bark is worse than his bite. Or maybe Bjorn's dad is trying to hide how much he's going to miss Bjorn. Sometimes that makes someone's voice gruff. If your parents ever yell at you when they are afraid that something bad was going to happen to you, that is sort of the same as using a gruff voice when you know you're going to miss someone so much. What role has Bjorn had at the forge for the past three years? He was an apprentice blacksmith. And what were the other things boys and girls were expected to do as part of growing up during um, the time of the Vikings. Boys might have been expected to travel on raids or become apprentices, farmers, 
fishermen, whereas girls might assume more responsibility in household chores. Both would be expected to marry very young, often by the age of 13. Bjorn's father says that their people can find their way through the most treacherous or dangerous of oceans. How did the Vikings do this? They had the very best longships and knew how to sail them, and they could use the stars to guide them. As with the Romans, there were three main orders or groups of Viking people. One order was the Jarl, which ancient Roman group was like the Jarls, the elite patricians. Another order was the Karls, which ancient Roman group was similar to the Karls, the plebeians. Which group does Bjorn and his family belong to? The Karls. The last order was the Thralls, and which ancient Roman group was similar to the Thralls? The slaves, that's right. Uh, what are some things that are different about growing up during the time of the Vikings compared to growing up today? All right. Thank you very much for listening. See you next time.